Hello, good evening. Welcome to Camden Television Main News. I'm Jeffrey Ziambo to present. Our top stories in the news tonight. Foreign investor cuts water source for Mutendere residents. Two Lusaka juveniles impregnated by their own fathers. Ministry of Lands goes digital. In international news, hundreds of thousands displaced following flash flooding in Somalia. At Exposed News, FAS President Andrew Kamanga challenges sports minister to state his interest in Kalusha Walia. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. The news in detail. Over 200,000 residents of Lusaka's Mtendere Ward 34 have had no water for the past five days after it is alleged that a Chinese national disconnected the water pipe in an effort to divert them on the land along Kamloops Road, which he has bought. Speaking to Kamnet News, the affected residents have highlighted a number of challenges that have come with a lack of water, among them hygiene challenges at home. Meanwhile, Area Councillor Boniface Chiveka has appealed to President Hakainde Hichilema for the state to buy off the said land so that it becomes state land, explaining that citizens cannot be inconvenienced due to private interests. More in this report. For five consecutive days, residents of Lusaka's Mutendere compound, as well as parts of Helen Kawunda and PHI, have had to walk long distances to search for water in neighboring communities as the areas have been dry with no single drop of water. This is a situation that has mostly left women and school-going girls with the task of fetching water in far places. Water is life. Without water, still it will be lost. Yes. Mtendere wa 34 councillor Bonfest Chiveka says the problem has come about after a Chinese national bought off some land along Kamloops Road stating that this is where the water pipes were passing necessitating the movement away from the property. It's actually more than 200,000 people who, who are affected by this because if you look at Mtendere, it's not just Mtendere compound, there's also PHI, part of Heren Kaunda, so it's actually a large part of the world which is affected. I'm appealing to the head of state, the president, Mr. Haka Inde Ichirema, His Excellency Mr. Haka Inde Ichirema, to intervene so that that stretch where the pipe passes should be compulsorily acquired by the state so that people should have water as it used to be, unlike where the, that part of land was sold to an individual, instead of considering the public good of that pipe. By broadcast time, the affected residents were appealing to their constituency member of parliament, Mike Mposha, who is also Minister of Water Development and Sanitation, to ensure that the problem is quickly rectified. Ziporam Shala, Kamnet News, Lusaka. 
Farmers in Mufumbwe's Kamabuta area of northwestern province have appealed to government to ensure that it distributes farming inputs for the 2023-2024 farming season on time. A farmer, Smith Malanji, explains that due to late distribution of farming inputs, a number of small-scale farmers who depend on government's inputs were negatively affected. Mr. Malanji hopes that government will consider distributing the farming inputs in the first week of June as it will help farmers to plan on time. Another farmer, Clifford Sakua, says a number of farmers failed to plan on time last year as they received the inputs late. More in this report. The late distribution of inputs in the 2022 to 2023 farming season by the government affected many farmers who said they have nothing to show off as most of their crops got destroyed due to lack of fertilizer as well as the high cost of the inputs. To that effect, some farmers in Mufumbwe, Kamaputo area of northwestern province have appealed to the government to ensure that it distributes farming inputs for the 2023 to 2024 farming season on time. A farmer, Smith Mulanji, explains that due to late distribution of the inputs, a number of small-scale farmers who depend on government for inputs were negatively affected and have no maize which is contributing to the anger situation in the area. What is a fertilizer? With the distribution of farming inputs, a number of us who depend on government inputs were affected. We are hoping that government will consider distributing the farming inputs in the first week of June for farmers to grow crops. They need fertilizer and inputs. But if we receive inputs late, it will greatly affect us. We ask government to at least give us inputs by June and July. Others have also appealed to the government to increase the packages of inputs they are expected to receive from the four they received last year to at least six packs, adding that Kamabuta Ward is growing and has a number of farmers who have formed cooperatives. <laughs> Kuronda, atu ya tu shiru kuchengi mui na mapake atu inkeri. Atu shiru kuchengi na wahela ishi kuku 13 thousand mapake sangu. Kuma cooperative ya naavuri tu dina awo. Hanu umu fertilizer tu atamburanga ye karanga yanti. We appeal to government to increase the packages of inputs that most farmers are expected to receive. Kamaputa word is growing and we have about 13 thousand cooperatives. <laughs> With Zambia's president, Hagainde Hitchlema, having promised that inputs will be distributed by June of 2023, these farmers remain optimistic that the inputs will come on time as anger is on their doorsteps following the loss of their crops due to the late distribution of the inputs. Prudence Jota, reporting for Kani TV News. Kampianga Primary School in Shibuyunji District of Central Province has set a record and become one of the first schools to begin using solar-powered batteries in the computer lab to ensure that pupils access computers for lessons. Speaking to Camnet News, one of the pupils, Lakness Chalinga, says this has set them apart from other schools as the area has no electricity. The pupils have, however, called for more solar panels and computers in the computer lab to make their learning more efficient. More in this report. Information Communication Technologies, ICTs, has remained a challenge in many of Zambia's rural areas due to the lack of electricity. This has disadvantaged most rural learners as they have to sit for the same examinations as those in urban areas with easier access to electricity. Kapyanga Primary School in Shibuyunji District of Central Province is, however, aggressively pushing to ensure that pupils at the school are not left behind in ICTs by using solar energy, which also helps in pumping water at the school. Some grade 8 pupils spoken to by Camnet News had this to say. Okay. 
it's just helping us okay because sometimes but sometimes it's very difficult if there is no sunshine like here mm. during rain season sometimes we don't have water meanwhile Shibo Yunji District Commissioner Alfred Chaputu says many schools in the district will in 2023 be connected to water and electricity using the Constituency Development Fund CDF. All clinics, all schools, they must have it created water. We should put tanks and the power. He said, every, even including this institution where we are here, we should bring power now. The DC says once implemented, this will bridge the existing gap between rural and urban schools. Ziporam Shala reporting for Kamne TV News. Two juveniles aged 12 and 15 years of Lusaka have been allegedly defiled and impregnated by their own biological fathers. In the first incident, police in Lusaka have launched a manhunt for a 48-year-old man of Chawama compound who is alleged to have impregnated his 15-year-old biological daughter. Police Deputy Spokesperson Danny Moale says the man only identified as Chonya is alleged to have been sexually abusing his daughter who he lives with after divorcing the wife last year. Mr. Mali says police were tipped by concerned members of the community in Chawama and immediately investigations were instituted, which revealed that the suspect was living only with his daughter after divorcing the wife. He says the victim narrated to police how the father was constantly demanding to have canon knowledge of her, of her until May 12, 2023, when members of the community discovered that she was pregnant. The police deputy spokesperson says officers are making arrangements to have the victim taken to social welfare for safe custody. Police in Lusaka have launched a manhunt for a 48-year-old man of Chawama compound who is alleged to have impregnated his 15-year-old biological daughter. The man, only identified as Chonya, is alleged to have been sexually abusing his daughter who he lives with after divorcing the wife last year. Police were tipped by concerned members of the community in Chawama and immediately investigations were instituted which revealed that the suspect was living only with his daughter after divorcing the wife. The victim narrated to police how the father was constantly demanding to have carnal knowledge of her until on May 12, 2023 when members of the community discovered that she was pregnant. Officers are making arrangements to have the victim taken to social welfare for safe custody and a 42-year-old man of Chunga West in Lusaka is detained in police custody for the offenses of defilement and incest. The suspect, only identified as Mono, is alleged to have defiled his 12-year-old biological daughter in January this year. This was discovered on May 12, 2023, after the daughter disclosed to her mother, who later reported the matter to police. The victim is five months pregnant. The National Union of Public and Private Educators of Zambia, NAKES, is strongly proposing a system of equating the cutoff point for boys and girls at grade 7, considering doing away with 100% automatic progression to grade 8. NAKES Executive Director Aaron Chansa in the, says in the past few years, statistics have clearly indicated that girls in Zambia have been performing much better than boys at primary level in almost all subjects. He says last year, more girls passed with Division I certificates, adding that despite these facts, girls are still given a lower cutoff point for passage to grade 8. She say, he says putting the same cutoff point for both boys and girls will put away the dangerous inferiority complex that has been fed to the girls for many years, wrongly convincing them that they are academically inferior to the boys with whom they are at the same grade level. Uh, we only have five months uh, before grade seven exams uh, can take place. And as we practically do our with the 100% automatic progression to grade eight, we want to strongly suggest 
that um, uh, the cutoff point for uh, grade 7 candidates should be the same for boys and girls. Uh, statistics are showing that um, girls are performing better than boys, and therefore there's no justification whatsoever uh, for the Minister of Education to give a lower cutoff points to girls. We need to uh, promote a com a competition among these genders. We want the same cutoff points uh, for boys and girls in order to do away with the false narrative that um, uh, boys are more intelligent than, than girls. Um, and as we do away with the, the automatic progression, uh, we expect that uh, some of the learners who will not make it academically would want to do vocational training. And it's important that the ministry should begin to prepare uh, to handle these learners that are going to be vocational. Columbia Town Council Chairperson Shadrick Munjanga has disclosed that the local authority has opened up about 42 kilometers stretch of Mukumbi Kalengelenge Road. Mr. Munjunga says the local authority used part of the 2022 Constituency Development Fund CDF to grade the said road. He says Kalumbila's population is growing, hence the need to open up roads that are impassable for road users. And Mr. Munjunga says the local authority has advertised the procurement of 3,000 desks so that no pupil sits on the floor while having lessons. Doing the roads, the township roads, which we are targeting. We are also doing the, the, the rural, yes, our feeder roads. As we speak, from the last year's uh, CDF, we, are, we have opened the 42-kilometer 40, stretch of um, Mukumbi Kalengirengi Road, which we have opened, but we now now to, to form it and then bread. We have also done, uh, is it 13, 15 kilometers of stretch from um, the junction of uh, Kambish, going to Kambish, it has also opened. We need also now, this time around, we need to grade them and then compact them to that standard. We have also done um, some good project in terms of uh, the, the CDF, the, 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 what, the classroom blocks, and also we have we've seen that last time, we have we had also procured some desks using the CDF, and in Kalumbina we are, we are putting up a pace to say we need to do um, the desks. We don't want any child to sit on the floor by the same as it is a presidential pronouncement. As Kalumbina district, where we are, we are on it. We have already advertised 3,000 desks, and very soon we'll, we need to combine also the other sources from local uh, generated sources from the, what we call it Word Fund to also procure another 3,000. So that when we give 7,000 plus to the Ministry of Education, at least we are going to, to, to help our schools, our learners will be sitting. Health Minister Sylvia Masebo has expressed optimism that the 11 surviving victims of the Kapiringozi road traffic accident will recover as they are being taken care of. Ms. Masebo, who visited the victims Sunday at the University Teaching Hospital, where they are being admitted, has described the accident as tragic, having claimed 25 lives. Yesterday, 25 New Apostolic Church members from Chongo District died, while 12, 11 survived with serious injuries. After a Mitsubishi Rosa bus they were traveling in hit, hit into a freight liner truck at Kapiringozi area along Chirundu Kafue Road. Meanwhile, the medical team at the hospital have since described the patients in admission as improving. Those that are in the hospital are being taken good care of and uh, we are hopeful that they will all recover. Although obviously some of them, they have matches and you know if you the bones, they take time to reveal. Uh, but uh, they are all stable. There's only one that is in the intensive care. Everybody else is uh, just by the side right? And the hospital staff are taking good care of them. The Movement for National Transformation has called on government to constitute a forensic expertise task force 
which will investigate and fast track the prosecution of graft criminal elements. In an interview, Mr. Shimonza says this task force should specifically be targeted at happenings under the former ruling Patriotic Front Party to put matters of alleged massive corruption under the previous administration to rest. The MNT president notes that this call comes in the wake of revelations in the media and court reports of hidden assets and money in the names of the former president Edgar Lungu and First Lady, former ministers and other former government officials. We are of the view that forensic investigations of graft under the PF regime must be investigated. What has happened is that a lot of unanswered questions have remained since the new Donald administration has taken office. And we want forensic investigations of proxies of the people that have uh, been used to get proceeds of crime. Reports that are coming from the courts and in the media, especially the past few weeks, are of a concern to us as Movement for National Transformation in the sense that we have a lot of unanswered questions, how people can buy 60 houses, 400,000 quaches given to Mises. So how much more money and property and assets are still in the hands of proxies of the former ministers, former president, and the first lady? As Movement for National Transformation, we feel that three things are cardinal in order for us to go this route. Because we need, number one, investigative journalism. Most of stories to do with graft have been left hanging. We want to appeal to the media houses to begin to pursue some of these stories by investigative journalism. We need uh, investigative wings like SEC, DEC, Financial Intelligence, and the Zambia Police to investigate with forensic investigative approaches. This is Cabaret Television News. Join us for more news after the break. From time immemorial, we have had different types of lighting options. From those that can burn down our investments in minutes to those that dig holes in our pockets due to constant replacement and huge consumption of our Zesco units. Savenda Electric introduces the new and advanced electric bulb with cutting edge technology of LED that has low power consumption, gives out bright white light and lasts up to 25,000 hours. Savenda Electric manufactures all types of LED light like plastic LED fluorescent tubes, down lights, ceiling lights, outdoor fittings and solar street lights made to customer specifications. Let's live on the bright side of life by choosing the wide range of Savenda electric lighting solutions that are available in all leading stores and supermarkets countrywide. For orders, call 0962-642-490 or email jnbanda at savenda.com or pchabula at savenda.com. Your skin is the biggest muscle in your body. That's why we make sure that Oracle is number one when it comes to taking care of your precious skin. Oracle Pure Petroleum Jelly and Glycerin soothes, moisturizes and keeps your skin perfect. Oracle Pure Petroleum Products for that perfect skin. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. Welcome back. We'll continue with the news. The Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources says it has deployed a new land management system which has replaced the old land management system. Ministry Permanent Secretary Daphne Chabu says the MLNR land administration system has been deployed into the government service bus to improve effective and efficient service delivery. Ms. Chabu says the ministry has successfully migrated the data from the old land management system to the newly developed system called the Zambian Information and Land Administration System. She says the old system has completely been shut down to pave way for the new system 
and that the ministry will be closed to the public from Monday 15th to 16th May 2023. Minos Smart Zambia National Coordinator Pesi Chinyama says the transformation will assist to reduce errors and discrepancies in land ownership and ensure that all stakeholders have access to the most up-to-date information regarding services under the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources. This entails that the old system has been shut down completely to pave way for the new system. In this regard, the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources will be closed to the public from Monday, 15th May 2023, which is tomorrow, to 16th May 2023, which is Tuesday. I will call for support from all the stakeholders as we transition from the old system to this new online system. With the new online system, members of the public will no longer be subjected to long queues at the ministry as the system will be accessed online. Digital tools to manage land ownership and transactions and online portals to facilitate communication and interaction between ministry and stakeholders. Government is optimistic to ensure that the migration and cleanup process of data of land administration is given the much needed support by the key stakeholders affected by land issues and these are the citizens of Zambia. The Seventh-day Adventist Church in Lusaka says persons with disabilities should not be excluded even when it comes to spiritual matters, stating that these two must be included. Speaking at the Woodlands Central Branch, Adventist Possibilities Ministry leader Sister Agnes Numbuka says the church has however stood out as it has been inclusive of persons with disabilities, especially those with deafness. She says the church is in this vein fundraising for a bus project which will ensure easy transportation for them and many others who may be willing to attend church to do so. More in this report. While more persons with disabilities are being included in social and economic sectors, many of them, especially those living with deafness, have been indicating that many churches are not inclusive as they have no sign language interpreters. The Seventh-day Adventist Church in Woodlands says it is, however, determined to change this narrative and has since begun fundraising for a bus which will help in transporting persons with disabilities to attend church services. So far, about 200,000 kwacha has been raised for the bus from contributions by church members. The group is not only from Woodlands. We have members from Chipata compound, some from Baulen, some from Mutendere, and uh, some from Kalifiliki. Um, so we do a lot of things with them. Uh, you know, the, our church is now uh, is, uh, is inclusive, not really now, is, uh, our church is inclusive. And so the programming with this uh, is to include them into our programming. It was even, you know, God looks at all of us as one. So far we have raised, last week when they came we were at 145. But we have gone to 148 plus. But today we are saying, Cameron comes and the bus should be bought. As Christians, it's a challenge. Even Adventists, we should have standards. As Christians, as children of God, we should have standards. On that is speaking, can, how can you be saying, come and see what the Lord has done when we are coming from a church? with plastics, when we don't have transportation to go and minister out there. The bus beneficiaries have expressed gratitude. So I'm really happy that so many deaf people come to this church and the reason is it is because we have a lot of benefits. The first one is we have a professional interpreter. Uh, when the deaf hear that there is an interpreter at a certain church, meaning to say, okay, we have a benefit, so we, we can go there because a deaf, uh, because we have an interpreter. But if a church doesn't have an interpreter, meaning to say it becomes boring, 
and hence uh, we can't even go to that church because even us as deaf people we would like to express ourselves so if we don't have an interpreter it becomes hard. The church says persons with disabilities should be encouraged to attend church and also be part of the Christian community. Ziporam Shala, Kamet News, Lusaka. The Southern African Center for the Constructive Resolution of Disputes, SACOD, Executive Director Boniface Chembe, has urged public institutions such as the Registrar of Societies to ensure that all political parties, including those that are in office, are in compliance with requirements. Speaking to Candidate News, Mr. Chembe says this is to avoid speculations that opposition political parties are being persecuted once they leave office. The SACOD executive director notes that a number of political public institutions are in the habit of following political parties after they leave office, which gives an impression that they cannot work independently. He says there should be a change of the narrative to ensure that sanity prevails in the country. Because the moment it is done when a party it has left office, it gives an impression that there is some kind of political hunt. We saw it uh, during the MMD uh, era when the MMD left uh, uh, office. Again, the Registrar of Society was at the center and heart of it. And now we've seen it uh, after the BF have left. Uh, and again, the Registrar of Society are uh, at the center of it. In other words, we want to appeal to the Registrar of Society to say, well, look, yes, uh, you are a government institution that is supposed to apply the rule of law fairly and equally to all uh, Zambians irrespective of um, our political status. But please kindly take a proactive step to appeal or engage those who may appear not to be complying with the law to say, well, look, you are sidestepping ABCD. Can you please rectify it because you are going contrary uh, to the law? Muchinga Province Permanent Secretary Henry Mukungule has directed all districts and school authorities to take production units seriously as they are not optional but compulsory. And Muchinga Provincial Education Officer Felix Ngoma says production should not be done only by teachers but pupils as this will be one way of impacting skills in them. Zanis has more in this report. With the education sector continuing to bear fruit since the recent recruitment of over 30,000 teachers, government has gone a step further to bring about initiatives for the learners. In this regard, Muchinga province has chipped in to be the fifth province to relaunch the production unit in schools in a bid to inculcate knowledge in learners besides their normal schedules. Speaking during the provincial relaunch of the production unit at Witikila Girls in Mpika district, Mchinga Province Permanent Secretary Henry Mukungole has directed all school authorities to involve community schools in the production unit. I wish to direct that all districts and the schools in the province should take production units seriously as it is not optional but compulsory. And Mchinga Province Education Officer Felix Ngoma highlighted the main objectives premised on the reintroduction of the production unit. Most of the production unit that we have seen in our schools is done by teachers. That is not the design and intention of PU. It is an activity for pupils because they are required to go out some schools. That's good. Stakeholders also called upon mentioned are the benefits that the production unit will bring to the learners with their placed involvement. I wish to assure and confirm to you that as head teachers in Tinga province, we will endeavor and make sure that production unit is seriously implemented. The production unit in schools is another supplementary effort by government besides the free education policy. Henry Lumpa Jr., Zanis in Mpika, Chinga Province. This is Kamen Television, main news, and not just another channel. Join us for international sports news after the break. For immediate coverage of any breaking or latest news in Zambia and around the world on Kamnet Television, call the numbers on your screen. Kamnet Television, bringing to your screens fair news, impartial news, 
credible and reliable news all the time. Get the whole truth on Comnet World News. television not just another channel water is life each drop counts and each must be cherished our tried and tested product meets all international standards with our smart drip technology we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage Ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. Welcome back. And now in international news, around 200,000 people have been displaced due to flash flooding in central Somalia as the Shabel River burst its banks and submerged roads. Residents of Beledwain town in Hiran region were forced out of their homes as heavy rains caused water levels to rise sharply. Sitting in a makeshift tent, Fatun Ali, not her real name, said she and her eight children fled their home in the middle of the night when the waters hit the town four days ago. In other international stories, Ghana's largest opposition party has chosen the country's former president, John Dramani Mahama, as its flag bearer for the 2024 presidential election. Delegates of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, voted in primaries over the weekend to choose a candidate for both the presidential and parliamentary polls. Details in this uh, news beyond our borders. These children are some of the 200,000 people that have been internally displaced following flash flooding in central Somalia. Their mother explains that they fled their home in the middle of the night when the waters hit their hometown of Belidwane just four days ago. Whenever the river breaks the banks, we flee. It's the fifth time we've fled and come here as an internally displaced people. They want food, as there's no one who takes and brings any food with their family here. As families collect water at a water point in the camp, residents of the town describe how they were relieved to have escaped with their lives. Many of them could only take the children. All their belongings were left behind. Officials say only three people died in the flooding. Uh, Some 200,000 people are now displaced due to the Shabeli River flash floods in Beladwain town, and the number may increase any time. It's a preliminary figure for now. It's a divine calamity. It was an unexpected disaster. We're satisfied with Allah's decree on us. However, we're doing all that we can to help those who are affected. As people in Beladwain wade through the sometimes waste level water, the country faces a record drought that has left millions of Somalis on the brink of famine. Experts say extreme weather events like this one are happening with increased frequency and intensity due to climate change. Ghana's former president, John Mahama, casting his vote in his party's election primaries on Saturday. And the country's largest opposition party, the National Democratic Congress, has overwhelmingly chosen him as its flag bearer for the 2024 presidential election. I believe that if NDC can power, most of the things which Ghanaians we want, NDC can come and do it for us. For instance, uh, taking care of our children, taking care of but, uh, that side, make, promise, give us a promise, which we, we, we look at it with it that they've they are able not to do those promises. So I know that if NDC can power, Baumis, they will turn to us, they will look those promises back and say they will do it for us. Mahama was tipped by most political analysts to win the primary, based on his experience and influence in the opposition party. They say he's likely to capitalize on the economic crisis facing the country in his presidential campaign. 
I believe in John Dramani Mahama. He has been a president before. He has been a vice president before, and he's a communicator too. So there's no way the, the sitting president can do something for us. We've given him eight years now, and there's nothing we are seeing now. But John, with John Dramani Mahama, he can turn things around for us. And that's why we believe in him. That's why we are here to vote for him. The primaries come as Ghana holds talks with the International Monetary Fund over a $3 billion bailout to help it overcome the economic crisis and as it faces a growing geodist threat from neighboring Burkina Faso. Thai voters heading into the polling booth early on Sunday morning. It's an election that some say could be the most important in decades. As he registered his vote, the current Prime Minister urged Thais to do their democratic duty. I would like to invite people all over the country, all ages and gender, who are eligible to cast their vote. I want as many people as they can to come out. The prime ministerial candidate from the main opposition party, Per Thai, looked calm as she came to vote. But was she feeling optimistic? Yes, of course. I, I have um, a very good mood, actually. So, yes, I'm excited. But as she cast her ballot, she'll be very aware that election results here are rarely simple. Her party is already under investigation by the Election Commission. I don't have any concern. I just, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just cheering for, for, for Thailand, to, to, for the people to just come out and, you know, use their rights. That's all I wanted for now. The deciding factor could be Move Forward, whose party leader was also hoping for a high turnout. Their message of reform could take more support from the military-backed parties or split the opposition vote. But everyone voting was keen that the process went smoothly. I want to see the politician who win devote themselves and think of the people first and foremost. But the most important thing is to have harmony. The most important thing is that uh, we bring the new changes. Voting is now drawing to a close and the election officials are starting to prepare for the count. That should take about four or five hours before we get some kind of unofficial numbers. And many people are hoping gives a clear and definitive result. Election officials preparing the sheets on which the votes will be recorded. But now the complicated part, deciding who has won. It's now time for sports news. In our sports news tonight, Football Association of Zambia President Andrew Kamanga says it is not true that the Football Association of Zambia is not in support of the hosting of the match between legendary Barcelona fans and the legendary Chipolo Polo legends. Mr. Kamanga also says the FAS has no issues with the legendary team. Uh, and the 2012 national jersey, using the 2012 national jersey but says the association has raised concern on the fact that people will pay to watch the match. Mr. Kamanga says the fact that the jersey has a Nike and Fuzz symbol means the jersey is a property of the two institutions and that it should be respected. He says the association is only concerned at the fact that the old jersey is being sold on the market without the consent of the association. He has since accused the sports minister, Elvis Nkandu, to declare his interest in the matter and, and in his support for legendary footballer Kalo Shawalia. This game is not a social game as has been portrayed. It's actually a commercial game because people will be paying to go and watch the game. So in that respect, it changes from being a social activity to a commercial activity. And in the same breath, if you are having a commercial activity, then the rights of uh, FAS or the commercial interests of FAS should obviously be considered. And I think this is where we are saying if this game goes ahead and there's commercial interest, where are we sitting as FAS? Yes, the jersey is an old one. It's from uh, Nike. It's uh, 2012. But it does have the logo of FAS. And I think this is where we have to respect the copyright as well as uh, intellectual property. So even if one attempted to remove the FAS logo, that jersey still remains a property of both uh, Nike and FAS. 
So I think we should be uh, fair in the way we respond. In fact, our interest and our complaint, which we raised in the letter to the permanent secretary, was very simple. Because at the time the game was announced, we noticed that there were people who were now offering the same jersey on the market. Now, the big question we are asking is, where have these jerseys come from? Was it the old stock or is it new stock? Has it been printed? And who is selling them? I think it's only fair that uh, we address that issue. And uh, in all fairness, it will also be helpful for the minister to declare interest in this matter. Because the minister and Galusha come a long way. Even in the elections of 2016, the minister was the campaign manager for Galusha. And even from his day of being sworn in, he made a very clear statement that Karusha should come back into football. And consistently, there's been statements from his office that fans should not exclude anyone. I also want to respond to that assertion. Fans has no reason to exclude anyone. The only thing that stops some people from participating in elections is the electoral process. in Kamer Television News, the headlines once again. Foreign investor cuts water source for Mutandere residents. Two Lusaka juveniles impregnated by their own fathers. Ministry of Lands goes digital in international news. Hundreds of thousands displaced following flash flooding in Somalia. In sports news, FAS President Andrew Kamanga challenges sports minister to state his interest in Kalusha Walia. Our comment verse of the day is coming from Psalms 139, verse 13 to 14. For you found my inward parts, you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Thank you so much for watching Kamen Television Main News. My name is Jeffrey Ziambo. Good night.